If you play live couch games where there's a lot of straddles, or really any game where there's an under the gun straddle available, you have to understand that you cannot just use your normal prefop ranges in these spots. The under the gun straddle is going to create a unique dynamic where the effective stacks are going to be halved, and as such, it's definitely going to impact the ranges you can play prefop, and should be playing prefop. So we did a complete GTO solve of this and put it in the GTO ranges app recently, and today I want to run you through some of these ranges and give you some major highlights and walk you through this solve, especially if you're going through it for the first time. So let's get into it. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit, and today I want to run you through the Under the Gun Straddle solve from Red Chip Poker. Now, if you've heard of Under the Gun Straddles, but you're not really sure what the heck is going on, what these really are, it's when the person who's under the gun puts out two times the big blind and action then starts on the player to their left. And if it happens to get limped prefop, the person who's straddled has the option to raise it or just check and see a flop. So pretty much what is happening is you're putting out to that second or two times the big blind and that is going to have the effective stacks so if you are normally playing with 100 big blinds but the straddle is on this hand that actually means the effective stack is now 50 big blinds so it's going to play much more shallow than if the straddle is off now as for the solve itself i won't bore you with all the technical details of the overall game tree but here are some of the major highlights the open raise size is going to be for six big blinds total because again there's two big blinds being put in by the straddle so it's a three times that is the open raise size three bet is going to be to 16 big blinds total in a limp re-raise so if the big blind in a situation decides to call folds around to them they just complete and the a straddler decides to attack them, then the limp re-raise size for the big blind is going to be up to 18 big blinds total. So those are kind of the major sizing highlights. There's a bunch of different things that can tweak in between in position versus out of position, but those are the major highlights to keep in mind if you're like, uh, how am I supposed to size an open raise here? Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an answer there. All right, so without further ado, let's just pop open the app and go forward and start poking around. So to find it, go to the full ring cash games, go to the under the gun straddle rgto r stands for raw which means all of these can have mixes it's not a binary simplified version where a hand is either included or not included these hands can have partial inclusion i mean if we would take a basic situation where mp who is going to be first act prefop decides to open notice that they can have a partial amount of a seven suited a partial amount of 10 nine suited so that is what the r stands for when you see the under the gun straddle rgto range so let's actually talk about this range first and foremost. So middle position, again, first act in the situation because under the gun straddled in this spot, they should be opening, according to the silver, 13.4% of hands. And notice that's looking mostly like the stuff, stuff in the upper left. So roughly eights plus, ace jack plus, all that kind of fun stuff up here. There's also a little bit of the ace five suited, ace four suited, some partial of ace three suited, all that kind of fun stuff. A couple of suited connectors, including something like 7-6 suited, also 10-9 suited, and that's roughly what you're looking at. And if you compare this to the regular live GTO solve, again, which is not going to have the straddle on, that's actually an open raise range from the under the gun player, so first act player of 9.3% of hands. So you're noticing an increase in the overall solver suggestion for open raising range, which makes sense if nothing else, because again, those effective stacks are halved. And notice now that the middle position has position on three different players, right? From the small blind, from the big blind, and also the under the gun straddler who is in there right this moment with 100% of hands. So all that makes sense that there's going to be a slight bump up in the overall open raise frequency from the first to act player from the straddle being on versus off. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that this solve, just like the original live GTO solve, does allow for multiple callers prefop. So if middle position does decide to open it, say two players can call, actually three can call because the overall straddler can get involved as well, which is definitely unique compared to other GTO solutions on the market, which allow for maybe one caller prefop if any in some situations. So keep that in mind, that makes this a little bit special and a little bit more precise. All right, moving on, let's say everyone folds prefop around to the button and the button decides to attack it from this point forward. Notice that the overall attack is 31% for the open raise on the button. 
And this is actually a little interesting if you compare it to the regular live GTO Solve. And I'm kind of comparing the two because I think most players who are going to be looking at it under the gun Straddle Solve are also going to be live cash game players, since that's where you tend to find straddles happen the most. I think it's important to understand and compare those two, at least contrast and like help you understand the solve a little bit more. So if you flick over to the regular live RGTO Solve, you notice that that raising frequency is 34% of hands, give or take, 33.5 if you're trying to be very, very specific, whereas here it's only 31%. And that makes sense to an extent because instead of like the live GTO solve where there's only two players left to act, the small blind and big blind, in the straddle solve, you have the small blind, big blind, and also under the gun involved there. So that's going to put a little bit more pressure on the button, and as that's, that's why you're seeing a little bit lower in terms of the open raising range than you do compared to say the live GTO solve. All right, so since we've already spent a little bit of time talking about the first act player and also the button, let's actually compare a spot where the first act player decides to open and the button decides to three bet in this situation. Well, we notice that here the solver is suggesting that the button three bet with 5.2% of hands. If we compare that to the live GTO solve, that's actually only a 3.8% three bet in that spot. So almost a 50% increase in the three betting percentage from the solver when comparing the first act player preflop opening and then the button deciding to three bet them, which if nothing else, I find a little bit interesting, not super shocking, but interesting nonetheless. All right, the next open raising range I want to look at, and by the way, you might be wondering why are we looking so much at open raising ranges? I think these are very, very important to start with. It's just very helpful if it folds around to you preflop, you have a rough idea on what you should be opening from each position. That's a really good starter point. It can also help you understand, hey, I think my opponent is probably opening way too much in these spots, and then you can start adjusting from there. So at least having a baseline on open raising ranges is going to be particularly useful. So let's clear this out and look at a spot where it folds around to the small blind who decides to open raise. And notice that's for a range of 28%. Now to go back and contrast this to the regular live GTO solve, the small blind should be opening 40.4% of the time. So this is much, much smaller. But again, not too, too shocking since now there are two players to contend with and both of them would have position on you from the small blind in this spot as opposed to the regular solve where there's only a single person left to act and you're out of position against just a single opponent. So not too, too shocking to see this get a little bit squished compared to the regular live GTO solve. All right, so we have one more open raising range to look at preflop, and that is from the big blind. So if it folds around, the big blind has two different options. They can actually open raise or they can limp and complete in this situation, which is really, really unique and special. Something that took a little bit of time and reworking in the overall game tree, but it's an important inclusion because if you just shunt the big blind's only decisions into fold or raise, I think that's massively, massively limiting. So it's really nice here that we have the limping option. Let's actually look at both from the big blind in this spot. So you notice here that the solver likes raising at 22% of the time, give or take. And it's really interesting if you look at the way that the solver is including hands, because you're going to see a lot of partial inclusions here in the raising side of things, but that's going to get filled up. The kind of gap is typically going to get filled up over in the limping side. So if you say keep an eye on ace jack suited, notice it's mostly getting opened, but if you look at the limps, the rest of that ace jack suited is going to get limp. So this is that mix between a raise and a limp in this situation, and you're going to notice that for most things. Now some things are very, very curious, like ace king suited is a pure inclusion in the limp, not included in the open at all for the big blind, which is kind of interesting. Ace queen suited very, very close to almost all of it being shunted into the limping range. But overall, not too, too shocking. If we look at both numbers, the big blind again from the open is going to be roughly 22%. From the limping is going to be roughly 48%. So the big blind should be folding about 30% of the time when it folds around to them. And then coming along for some sort of action 70% of the time with actually the bulk of those actions being limps instead of open raises. And just in case you are completely curious about what under the gun should be doing when the big blind just decides to limp here, under the gun should be raising 41% of the time. 
And if you look at the shape of that, that is extremely, extremely interesting in my opinion. I'll let you kind of dig through that when you go through the app, but I think this is definitely something worth considering. Obviously, every other hand that's not included here, like Ace-5 Offsuit and 9-4 Suited, all those are just going to be check behinds from the Straddle player. But still, that's a lot of attacking here, but not too, too shocking because Under the Gun is in position, and the Big Blind definitely has some not-so-strong stuff in that completion range. So, it's interesting if nothing else. And since we're talking about Under the Gun a little bit, I wanted to look at one more range that I thought was interesting. Lots and lots of these ranges, by the way, are quite interesting, and you can really discern quite a bit about what the solver is doing, and especially when you compare this to the regular live GTO solve, get a lot of insights on how that effective stack being halved is really impacting the overall preflop ranges. But another one that I want to look at is the situation where the cutoff decides to open and under the gun decides to 3-bet. So let's say the cutoff opens, under the gun decides to 3-bet, and you notice that that's for 9.8% of hands. So there are a couple of things to note here. First is the shape of this overall 3-betting range. Notice it's very, very linear. Most of those hands mash right up in that upper left-hand corner. Things like 9s plus and a lot of other hand types that you're not super shocked to see in a GTO prefab 3-bet range. One of the other things I think is interesting, again, it's not a perfect parallel between the original live GTO solve, but if you look at the big blinds 3-betting response facing a cutoff open to this straddle solve where the under the gun person is 3-betting, and I think it's a decent comp only because you have the person who's posting the largest blind preflop facing an open from the cutoff and folding around to them, the 3-bet response in the straddle solve is roughly 10%, and over in the regular solve is about 8%. So you are definitely Definitely noticing a little bit of a difference. There's a slight difference between the cutoffs open raising range of both of the solves, but I think it's definitely interesting to note that the under the gun response here is wider and more frequently three betting. And then the overall continuance from Under the Gun in this exact situation is also, you know, kind of wide between the Under the Gun 3-bet at roughly 10% and the Under the Gun call facing, again, that cutoff open at roughly 16.5%. So there's a decent chunk of continuance happening from the straddle player in this exact situation, even though they were going to be out of position going post-flop. So if nothing else, I thought that was at least interesting to poke around with, share, and talk through at least a little bit. So those are some of the interesting starter ranges from the Under the Gun Straddle Solve. You can unlock everything by getting the app today and just unlocking it right through there or go to redshippoker.com slash app to unlock it and go from there. And if you're brand new to the app or you're just interested in checking it out, there is a free version to be able to check out the open raising ranges for all of these, including the regular live GTO Solve as well and plenty of other ranges, including tournament ranges, six max ranges, etc. So definitely make sure to check it out. You can get all the open raising ranges totally for free or unlock the app go premium and get everything including three bet ranges four bet ranges and everything you want to see in terms of gto responses preflop especially for cash game players that play with roughly 100 big blind depth this is extremely extremely useful again redchippoker.com slash app or just look for the gto ranges app in your app store of choice to check it out and get started today but that's going to wrap it up for this video thank you so much for hanging out hopefully you enjoyed this kind of exploration through the app and some of these ranges if you have any other thoughts, questions, want to see other videos that are looking at different kind of things in the app or different ranges, discussing different things just like this, let me know. I'd be more than happy to see what I can do in terms of making future videos. And if you like the video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated as well. Otherwise, I'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.